Hey everybody, hope y'all are doing real well. It's hot here in late July and uh, a lot of people having problems keeping the garden water and stuff like that. So I figured we'd do a little bit of a garden update today and uh, show you how I get some watering done. Conventionally, a lot of people would have like one big sprinkler in the middle or rows of sprinklers shooting overhead and stuff like that. And I have found that that is not a very good idea when you have tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, melons, and stuff like that, uh, because they get the funguses, the blights and stuff. Once they get the water on the leaves, they just spread like crazy. So I tried to do all my watering from the bottom. If it was just a cornfield out here, you'd have one sprinkler and I'd be sitting over there in the shade somewhere. So what I do is I've got an inch and a quarter pipe that pumps from the creek way down yonder. And what I'll do is just lay this thing at the end of the rows and flood the rows. This works out pretty good. We've had about two tenths of an inch in the last uh, three or four weeks and the corn is still making. Same thing with the beans over there. Just take this pipe, may have to drag it down a little bit because that's fairly flat. This got some slope to it so it will go down the hill. Same thing with the squashes and stuff here. I can just lay this down and let that work its way up through there. Let me show you what I did over here. The pressure coming out of that inch and a quarter line uh, is, is pretty good. Uh, probably a little bit more than I wanted some areas. So I put a, a T in here, a reducer, and a hose bib so I can put a water hose. And the things that I don't need a tremendous amount of water that I can just carefully uh, let this stuff go down the road, like the cucumbers, this works out great. I've got a valve up there on the end down this way where I can turn it a little bit and increase or decrease the pressure right here. So with this, I can turn it, uh, decrease the pressure on the end, or, and then send more water back out the uh, water hose, which is sitting right here. These are some national pickling cucumbers. I don't think I've ever tried to grow cucumbers this late in July, but we had some requests for them, so I figured I would try. And I've got them at a nice mounded up furrow like that so I can run water right down in the middle. And what I've got is the hose from over there just sitting here and it is gradually filling that trough all the way down to the end you can see starting to get wet the side of the hills uh, you can also see a lot of downy mildew on there that's what i was talking about with the funguses and stuff uh, if you rain on this stuff that fungus is just going to go straight up just as fast as it can even though i'm trying to spray it to combat it uh, this is going to be quite a battle but that works real well and you notice we're not really wasting water by filling in all between the rows and stuff in this situation. We're keeping it right at the base of the plant and letting it work its way out. So if you live in a dry area where you don't have a lot of water, this is a good way to maximize what you have. Same thing with this uh, squash right here. Everybody knows in July you can plant squash in about 30 days you'll be picking it. This ain't been in here probably three weeks. It's it's kicking butt. The same thing. I can take this hose, lay it up under here, and let that, you know, 20 foot of squash get plenty of water. Works out great. Down there, you can see the early tomatoes that we had. Those are the ones we had to fight the freeze on Mother's Day to keep going. And we've been picking a ton of tomatoes off those things. Big beef is just killer. And this is the way I do them. You can see a closer up with these right here. These are some more big beef that were rooted from suckers. And when I plant them, I make a big mound around it. So when it's dry like this, I can take this pipe, lay it in here, and just flood the base of this plant and give it as much water as uh, it'll hold based on depending on uh, how big the furrow and stuff is. And this works out great. And also you can add some miracle Grow or Master Blend or whatever uh, around the base of this and flood it and just soak it right in there. Same thing over here. But we got pumpkins, acorn squash, burgundy okra, same principle. Plant it and then heal up around it so when it gets really dry like this, you can come by and give this stuff some water. And I don't need to water all this open ground in here. They ain't doing me no good right now. So this, you get the plants going while they're young enough. And then hopefully Mother Nature will come along and uh, give you some water on the outside. One other thing you'll find out as you're doing this, These have already had one shot earlier this morning. 
uh, when you come out here and flood the base, all your squash bugs and stuff, they're coming up to the top. And you just go along and you just pinch them right off, squish them in your hands, and there's your insect control right there. And this poor little okra out here, this was actually transplanted. Uh, I, think, I don't think I've ever tried to do that before. We had some in a raised bed that was just way too thick, and guess what? It's still too thick. But I dug them up and put them out here on this outside row and spaced them out to give them enough room like Donald used to do to make a bush, and they are doing just that. They love the heat. As long as I can get them some water, we're going to have some okra. Okra. Is it 5 o'clock yet? <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> I don't think it's 10 o'clock yet, is it? Like, dang, don't. Well, it's hot in that greenhouse. I ain't going in there. It is not fun. All right, down here where the watermelon and the cantaloupe are, uh, I did water them by hand for quite a while with a hose coming across here from uh, up there to IBC. And it's just so dry now. Uh, when I planted these things, I had an idea of what was coming. So I put a uh, tea tape, the drip tape down through there. And I've got that hooked up right here running over to a faucet and that way I can get them plenty of water down there nice and slow and uh, we might make a watermelon it's gonna be close gonna get a bunch of cantaloupe though for sure see how well this works when you got a drip line in here I don't know if you can see it but the camera is nice and wet and starting to get soggy sit down in here and this is very slow this is a good way to water but you need clean water you don't need creek water coming in with all the gunk in it and trying to stop up all your little holes. All right, this is what I was watering the watermelon and the cantaloupe with, and I got a row of uh, celebrity tomatoes over here that I'm doing the same thing. You see, I don't have a whole lot of water left, so uh, that's one reason why I switched over to the drip line over there. Go ahead and use that and save this for the tomatoes down here that I didn't have drip on. Uh, what I got coming off the back of the shed right here, gutters into this IBC, and then I've got another IBC that's like half, and what I would do is take this utility pump, set it down in there, hook the water hose to it, and then drag that along, and that's what I use to water the tomatoes with. I'll show you in just a minute. Same thing we got up here, we got a, a mound around them, and I'll just fill up that sur uh, area with water and go on to the next plant. This works out really well if you get a lot of rain. Uh, when the rain shuts off, it doesn't take long for this water to disappear. I am using this very sparingly down here right now. Alright, right here I told you I was using the water sparingly. And you can see these celebrity tomatoes, they are thirsty. So in just a little bit, I'm going to wipe out just about all of that water in the tank over there. And go down and uh, take care of these plants. They don't have as big a place around them but they do have more of a, a wider furrow so it kind of keeps it going down through there and not wasting the water all right a lot of people ask us in addition to just gardening and stuff do y'all have fruit trees it depends on your definition of a fruit tree if we get fruit from it um probably not but if it has little bitty small stuff on there yeah we got a whole lot of fruit trees supposed to be this is one of the peaches it's probably doing better this year than it has ever done uh, we got apple trees, more peaches over here. The best thing we got going probably is pears, and I like that because it makes some pretty good wine. All right, if y'all remember, uh, several years ago I did a video about growing Siva butter beans. It's a pole type running butter bean. Uh, the Thomas Jefferson actually grew up at Monticello, and these things, look at this. This is going to be the easiest picking butter beans ever. See my little butter beans in there? And butter beans are the little green ones, not the big fat white ones. That's right. They're lima beans. Exactly. So these are done real well. Uh, actually what I did, to kind of stage it, I planted this section of um, Vortex pole beans. The snap beans, those are excellent. These are the butter beans. And uh, two, three weeks later, I come back and planted some more of uh, the Siva butter beans and some more uh, the Vortex snap beans. These are, man, easy, easy, easy. And a lot of times, if you see a uh, snap bean that starts to look like that, it's probably going to be tough and everything. 
Um, most of the bush ones are. These are just as tender. There's no strings to them. See that? No strings whatsoever. That's a good taste in bean too. That's one of the things you find out in gardening over the years. You find a variety that works for you, that you like to eat, and you stick with it. That's why we do the Siva butter beans, the Fortex um, snap beans, and if I'm just going to do a row of uh, snap beans, I'm going to do striped beans. But as I'm getting older and the back is getting sore, uh, I'm preferring to do my picking standing up. Thank you. Okay, the producer just told me to remind y'all of something that I hadn't thought that much about. When you're doing your bush type beans, usually you get like a, a one quick burst of production and maybe a few stragglers, you know, over the next week or so, and then that's it. With these pole type beans, they start producing down here and they just keep going up and you can see how many blooms are already on here, still on here. The butter beans, all the beans coming up and they're still blooming up top. These things, as long as you keep them watered through the summertime, uh, the pollination might slow down a little bit so you don't have quite the production, but you make it through the, uh, the hottest months and then come fall, you're gonna have a ton of beans out here to pick. And the other thing, when you get close to the end of the season, don't pick everything in Canada to eat it. Make sure you leave some and let them dry out so you got some good seed to come back and do this again next year. Which one's more effective? <laughs> I guess, the scar which one's scarier? <laughs> All right, and this, this ain't as pretty as it was earlier this year. We're just about winding this, uh, the summertime stuff down and getting ready for the cabbage and broccoli and stuff uh, in a few more weeks. Got some big beef over here that don't look anything like the ones over there. Uh, we got some Siva butter beans right here that are actually, actually starting to fill out. Those things are going to be all right. If you got a bad back, that's a good way to pick butter beans. Got to have everybody. Got to have some sunflowers around the garden, right? Make it pretty. This right here is uh, something a little sneaky. This was called a marriage heirloom tomato. What they have done, I kid you not, is taken two heirloom paste tomatoes and they crossed them to get a different variety and they are calling it a marriage heirloom versus, it's an F1 hybrid, folks. When you cross this one and this one, you're gonna get a hybrid. But they are, got rid of the hybrid name and they're calling it a marriage heirloom. Wanna keep that heirloom part in there. I don't think it matters. They've been very slow coming on for the longest time and they have finally started to kick in the gear and actually got some good looking tomatoes on there. Pretty good. This is a few more of the okra that I transplanted like the ones in the garden and you can see they're closer together. They're not going to make a, a nice bush. This is our banana tree that we bought last year took it inside over the winter and brought it back out again this year and this is the second year and if this sucker don't give us some bananas this year it's going to be its last year. As some of y'all might recall last year I had situations with nematodes in the greenhouse. I've also had them out here despite the fact that I've tried to treat this soil and get rid of them. They are a pain in the butt. These are the Anaheim peppers and they're loaded. I mean there's a lot of peppers on them but they don't look anything like I think they should. Those uh, root knot nematodes are just hard to deal with. Up in this bed, this is kind of like herb bed. Uh, as they say, that's a pretty big deal right there. Got some uh, basil, oregano. I think it was some cilantro in here somewhere. And there's some pepperoni, teeny peppers. Uh, this is that bed of okra that I told you was too thick. And if you'll notice, Everything is going straight up and they're not flowering until they're up here about four foot tall versus the other ones out there on the edge of the garden that are about this tall and bushing out. These things, no sunlight down here, they just go straight up. I thinned them out some, but not enough. And these are hyacinth beans. I don't know if you guys have ever grown them. They're not edible, not for people anyway, but they make a nice uh, covering for a trellis. This is one we got on clearance at Lowe's probably a couple years ago and this made a nice little uh, entryway or pass through here. The color of these things purple, the seeds of uh, the, the beans that have a nice big purple pod to them, purple flowers, 
beautiful specimen to grow for a trellis. The hummingbirds love them too when they're blooming. Like you said, hummingbirds love them too. <laughs> I know most of you have seen these swings that you get from Walmart, just a regular A-frame with a swing in the middle. Well, we did something different with our swing. Well, we took the A-frame and set it out here over this little box and uh, used it as the uh, structure to run the strings up for our uh, pole butter beans, the Siva butter beans. There's an idea for you. And the good thing about that, when the season is done, uh, you don't want to grow beans in that box again. You just pick that thing up and set it right over this one or one over there, anywhere you want to. Now you tell them this is what we did with the swing. Why am I butting in all of a sudden? Because I'm, you're, the, you're the producer holding the camera and I'm so far away you ain't going to hear it. So this is what we did with the swing. Something else you need to think about. Uh, for us, they usually don't bring the cabbage and broccoli and stuff plants out until, you know, right around Labor Day. And that's kind of like about two weeks late. So this year I made sure we went ahead and started uh, some Georgia collards, got some Pac-Man broccoli and some early Jersey uh, cabbage in here. So in about three more weeks, I'm going to finish up that corn out of there, uh, till it up, and we're going to plant our cold crops out there. This is a quick shot in the greenhouse, got some big beef, cherry tomatoes, more big beef, grow more tomatoes this year than I've grown in probably six, seven years. A whole lot of stuff going on this year, and it's still hot. <laughs> and just in case you had any doubts, that's a big beef right there. I did trim the leaves off of this side of it just so you could see how many tomatoes were on there at one time. That's a lot of tomatoes. And if you're somebody who likes cherry tomatoes, uh, you got to try these uh, sweet 100s. Man, these things are some kind of good. Mm. Everybody's shocked when they taste it because they're used to the grocery store type. These are so good. And I always say is they are so sweet. So that was a little bit different. I just wanted to do something to show you um, how even though it gets dry in the summertime and uh, it ain't the best gardening situation, you can still get a lot of things to grow. It just takes a whole lot of work. Uh, it does help to have a creek. Um, maybe other people have a spring on the property or whatever, a whole bunch of uh, IBCs collecting rainwater all year. Whatever it takes, if you're going to garden, I'd highly recommend you make sure you have a place to get some water from. Because if you don't, this time of year, it ain't going to be no fun. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. And Lord willing, it's going to be 5 o'clock soon, and I'll see y'all next time.